date is. May 27th, 2014, regular meeting of the Troy Planning Commission. Copies of the agenda for tonight's meeting are available at the entrance to the room. Additionally, the agendas and minutes of prior meetings are available on the city's website. The meeting will be conducted in accordance with the agenda as, pre as presented or amended by the Planning Commission. The roles and responsibilities of the Planning Commission are outlined on the reverse side of tonight's agenda. State law establishes planning commissions. The commission is comprised of nine members, all of whom have volunteered to serve. Members are appointed by the mayor and confirmed by city council. The other individuals seated at the table this evening are representatives of the city's planning department, the city attorney's office, and the city planning consultant, Carlisle Wartman Associates. If you wish to address the planning commission, please come forward when recognized and provide your name and address on the sign-in sheet. Please begin your remarks by stating your name for the benefit of the commissioners. All remarks are to be addressed to the Planning Commission and not to anyone else in the room. At this time, I ask that all cell phones, Blackberries, PDAs, and any other devices that might disrupt the meeting, please either be placed in silent mode or be turned off. The roll call, please, Ms. Arnicky. Ms. Cruz? Here. Mr. Edmonds? Yeah, here. Mr. Gottlieb? Here. Mr. Hudson? Mr. Krent? Here. Mr. Zanzika? Mr. Shepke? Mr. Strat? Here. Mr. Tagle? Here. We have a quorum. Um, <coughs> item two is the approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion? Mr. Tagle? Mm -hmm. And second by Mr. Uh, Gottlieb. Gottlieb. Mr. Edmonds? Yes. Mr. Gottlieb? Yes. Mr. Krent? Yes. Mr. Surratt? Yes. Mr. Tagle? Yes. Ms. Cruz? Yes. Number three is the minutes of the uh, May 13th, 2014 regular meeting. Is there uh, a motion to approve or uh, any comments? Mr. Stratt? Second? Second. Mr. Gottlieb? Mr. Gottlieb? Yes. Mr. Krent? Yes. Mr. Stratt? Yes. Mr. Tagle? Yes. Ms. Cruz? Yes. Mr. Edmonds? Yes. Next, we have uh, public comment for items that are not on the agenda. Is there anyone in the audience who wants to speak to an item that is not on the agenda? Seeing none, we'll move on to the Zoning Board of Appeals report. Mr. Krent. Yes, there were four items on our agenda this last this month. Uh, one was for a lot split, and it did not meet our ordinance requirements. They were asking for a variance, and the uh, board decided not to approve. They as a matter of fact, they, they they denied the variance. Um, the second one was a very minor, uh, actually, I'll try to describe it. It's a little difficult to describe. The house was built in a subdivision that did not comply with the original zoning ordinance for that when that was built. Um, and our new uh, district, uh, the zoning requirements, the setback requirements for that district have even increased since that time. So I know. So what, so what happened is all the, the homeowner wanted to do was add a small addition that fit within the envelope of the existing building, but he couldn't do it. So what happened, we reviewed it, it was a foot and a half difference, basically what it amounted to. So because of the unique situation, uh, the board approved the variance and this person can complete his project. The, uh, the third item was a request for a variance for tree house. The, um, because tree houses don't require a building permit, unless there's some foundation requirements, in other words, it's just building a tree, there's no requirement for a building permit. The, uh, the person building it didn't check with the ordinance and made it the roof about four foot higher than what's allowed for a for an accessory building. <laughs> so after listening to the, um, the homeowner and the homeowner's wife and I would say at least a half a dozen if not more neighbors all saying they had no objection with this, the only objection came from a neighbor that was directly behind this house and his concern, not an objection to the point where he didn't want it, he liked it, but he, his, his only concern was that there'd be no windows facing his home or a deck that people can walk around to view inside his home. 
and that's the condition we use to approve the variance. In other words, there would be no windows in that direction or a deck that kids could walk around. So that was approved with that condition. And the last item, uh, the petitioner did not show up, and the board decided to postpone it to the next meeting. Any questions for Mr. Uh, Craig? If not, we'll uh, move on to number six, uh, the DDA report. Seven. It'll be very quick because there was no meeting okay. last month, so Silence. pretty. And how about uh, number seven, the uh, planning and zoning report? Planning and zoning report. First and foremost, I'd like to introduce our, all the planning commission to our newest member, Karen Cruz. I'm looking forward to her um, participation on the planning commission. The um, first item that we're going to talk about this evening, the Children's Hospital of Michigan. They submitted a complete application at the end of last week, so that is moving forward. We also received a, an application for a new field and stream retail outlet uh, on the site of the old Circuit City building next to Oakland Mall. It's That's basically, good. it's, it's uh, although it's a competitor, it's comparable to like a Bass uh, Pro, Shop, Pro, Shop. Pro Shop type. In fact, um, I, think the, I think the intent is as, as one drives north, on 75 entering Michigan from Ohio, it'll be the first mm -hmm. of its of its size and its type uh, that you see in Michigan before you get to Great, the Great Lakes Crossing and the Bass Pro Shop there. So um, they're hoping that this location will lend itself to uh, to major success there. Okay. That's um, that's all I got. Okay. Next, we'll go to uh, item number eight, which is the preliminary site plan application, file number SP994. Proposed Children Hos Children's Hospital of Michigan, northeast corner of Big Beaver Road and Civic Center Drive, 350 West Big Beaver Road, Section 21, currently zoned BB, Big Beaver District. And what we're going to do is, Ben's going to do a really cursory summary because we, we don't have a complete site plan yet, so it's going to be really kind of right. a 10,000 yard type of a review. Um, Jim Butler is here, civil engineer for the site. He can speak in great detail to the site plan. He can probably do about as good of a job as me, tripping his way through the architectural. We'll do better. <laughs> <laughs> but we can, with the three of us can kind of tag team it, and, um, and we'll take it from there. Um, so uh, as Director Sadon indicated, um, we just received a complete application for the site plan uh, last week. So my comments and what was in your memo was based um, solely on the sketch drawings, the concept drawings that were included in your packet. Um, DMC is proposing a children's, they're calling a children's hospital of Michigan at this location. The name is somewhat of a misnomer. It's not truly a hospital, it's more of a medical clinic slash medical office. Um, it's not a hospital because they're not, uh, patients are not staying overnight at this location. It will be open 24 hours, but if they're um, required overnight stay, they will transport them to the downtown center location. So under our definition of zoning, it does not constitute a hospital and is a permitted use uh, within the form based district that is located. Um, that being said, they're proposing a 60,000 square foot building. Um, it's approximately three stories with a small um, tower located on top of that. Again, it will be open 24 hours uh, with uh, no overnight accommodations. And the site is located within the Big Beaver form based district. Um, we've done a very cursory review um, and noted that it appears as if all um, most, if not all, of the form-based requirements have been met, but again, those are on the preliminary plans that we have reviewed. Um, as required, the building placement has been located um, along Big Beaver. Um, the issue that says 20-foot setback, we're in a little bit of discussion with them on what that setback will be because they're actually donating a portion of their site to the city as part of the Big Beaver right-of-way expansion. So where the actual designation line is going to be, we haven't <coughs> figured that out yet. Um, but that will include the removal of the retaining wall that is, exists along that sidewalk and then moving the sidewalk further back into the site. Um, they have given us um, building elevations. Those uh, do appear to meet the design guideline requirements. They have full um, transparency along the front elevation facing Big Beaver as well as the parking lot. And they're, um, they have submitted detailed elevations in the packet that we received last week. Uh, the parking for the building is located along the side and rear. Um, of the building and is not included on Big Beaver, so they meet the form based requirements for that. Um, and they have provided a primary entrance along Big Beaver. Um, can I have the 
So as the site layout is, and, and Mr. Butler can go into much more detail about this, uh, the primary entrance to the, to the facility is located in this corner of the building. This again is Big Beaver. There's both a front entrance on Big Beaver as well as a main covered entrance through a canopy. The ambulatory and emergency access is gonna be located in the rear of the site and screened from both Big Beaver and screened um, with, with landscaping from Town Center Drive. Um, primor, uh, primary area parking is located at the side and rear of the building and they have internal pedestrian walkway kind of a spine that we talk about in many other applications that kind of bisects the site. All or most of the mechanical and utilitary utilities are located in the rear and the side of the building. And you'll notice the building is slightly tilted. This is in order to screen all the utilities from Big Beaver as well. We did talk about, there was some issues about the, the noise as um, a result of the generators. Um, in the site plan that we've received, they're actually located interior to the parking lot because they don't meet the, the noise decibel at the parking lot, um, at the property line for Marriott. They're actually at the terminus of the, of the spine. Okay, this oh, location. They're in there, yeah. Okay. Um, there is enough parking on site based on their square footage, um, but they also have um, <coughs> to a parking, a shared parking agreement with the Marriott if there is any spillover. And so they, they intend to have most of their employees park at, at the Marriott location and use this remaining parking for, for visitors and for uh, patients. Uh, the last kind of thing I will comment on is that if you notice there, there is an existing curb cut on Big Beaver. The applicant's been working with the engineering department. This is going to be removed and a secondary entrance will be located which lines up directly across from the city hall parking lot on Town Center Drive. And this access currently does currently exist and it will remain in its current location. The, uh, the back of the site is intended for uh, stormwater management. And if such time that they need further expansion, they would expand some of the parking area to the rear of the site if necessary. Did you mention the share parking arrangement they have? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. One thing, um, as someone who makes this commute every day, so there's, again, here's Big Beaver. There's an existing drive here. There's an existing drive here. And there's a drive here. So in the morning, the, the potential, when you're making that turn, um, the building's gone now, obviously. But when it was functioning and busy, You've got potential conflicts here and here, when you're, as well as the traffic that's coming westbound on Big Beaver. So this is really going to help clear that up because it's 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 a little scary now. It, at least per, perception is now because because of this extra drive and you're competing with this with this diesel lane here. You're competing with entering that lane with all that all that traffic. So it's really going to going to do a lot for for this section of Big Beaver. Um, again the. The generator, which is proposed to be over here, they had some issues um, getting the noise levels down under the um, the requirement of 65 decibels at the property line. They couldn't do that, so they're proposing moving it over here. This 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 conceptual drawing does not show that because they, they made that change recently. But the site, just so there's no full disclosure, no surprises, they're ta they're talking about putting it over here. So, in terms of site plan. So the building, architects are, are you uh, an architect by chance? I'm <laughs> fine. Do, do, you, do you play one on the radio? <laughs> no. Okay, so, so in Ben and, 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 uh, and Jim, feel free to jump in. Sure. What, what is exciting for you is, is I'm going to probably not do a very, very good job with this, but the person that designed it, Art, uh, is it Smith? Art Smith? Art Smith. Art Smith. Art Smith does a really good job describing this. So my anticipation is he'll be at the Planning Commission meeting um, describing this project, which is which is pretty pretty neat. So this is the um, this is a south elevation. So this is facing Big Beaver, and uh, as Ben indicated, no, notice that there there is an actual uh, entryway here. The um, the colors are primary primary bold um, form equals function. I mean it, it's a children's hospital. It's going to look like a children's hospital, or at least what what. DMC and the architects feel a children's hospital should look like. It's not going to be mistaken for a bank headquarters uh, or anything like that. It's it's really constructed to be a children's hospital, and that's what it's going to be. Um, we've been told that the, the uh, building materials themselves are going to be a very high quality, and they're going to they're going to age very well. So in two years or three years, they're not going to be faded and and and, and not bold. They're going to still be vibrant and, and really um, really bold. Uh, one thing that wasn't clear to me looking at this, um, you've got the, obviously the contrast of the bold colors. Um, this is the, the west elevations. This is what you'd see from City Hall. Um, yellow is the main entrance, yellow, the yellow color, and red 
for the emergency. Real, real simple concept, but you know, with, with signage as well, it's, it's really going to jump out as, as if you're in an emergency situation, you go to the red area, and if you're just simply uh, dropping off for, for an appointment or what have you, um, you go to the yellow area. So again, form equals function. This is the north elevation. So this is this is kind of the side of the building with the with the, the utilities. And there's a did you mention the MRI machine? There's an MRI there's an MRI unit that's that's um, in order to have a, full, a permanent MRI machine, you've got to you've got to demonstrate need. You have to have a certificate of need with the state of Michigan. In order to do that, you have to you have to utilize one for a period of time, and then and then you get you get your your go ahead from the state. So they're going to have basically a uh, a door here where the door comes up, the MRI unit backs in, the truck leaves, the door closes, and the unit's there for three days a week or four days a week. And then after that period of time, the tractor trailer backs up, hooks up, and pulls away. So that's at the back of the building. Still still for for a, a rear end of the building, still very colorful. Brent. Yes. Before you go from that slide. Well, you can see it here. The people, are those windows, see that one woman that's kind of hanging off in space on the yellow? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that, what is that over there? And, and on the other side, is that a porch or a deck, do you know? Right here? Yeah, the people. It looks like a, like a balcony. Okay. Yes, it's in close. It's a balcony. It's part of the building. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Part of the building. This does, based on our review of this, again, cursory review, it does meet the transparency requirements. And that's with a com com combination of glass doors and other architectural features. And they did a really cool job, a really neat job here. These bump outs to add visual interest and add, you know, add another feature to that to that elevation to, to really kind of make it pop. This is the this is the side of the building. They, there's, they, they've got to meet a, a number of uh, they've got a, a number of design issues. I mentioned the the, the MRI machine and the utilities, uh, the generators and whatnot. They've also got um, state law regarding the right to privacy and, 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 and you know, what people can see inside the building when, when someone's in a hospital, in a medical center, in terms of what you can see and whatnot. So they've got to they've got to really uh, be um, strategic in the use of windows. Um, so this this side I think has the least amount of windows on a percentage basis, but still with the with the color and with the bump outs, it, it, it does add it does add visual interest. What, another neat feature is you get this is this is roof screening elements here. You know, this one's proposed to be green, and this one's orange. And um, when you, you look, it's not just a square uh, shape. It's, it's, it's circular, and, and it carries down uh, from the roof down uh, along the, the elevation of the building. And the same goes for the other unit over here, where it's green. And then, um, you know, you see how it carries down. And, and then links, you know, the, the, the roof down the, down the wall, then, then links to the, the screening. Uh, for the uh, for the generators and other equipment, so it's really kind of a neat neat design. Um, that was my uh, <laughs> rough version of <laughs> of your presenta presenting the um, architectural plans. And our, I promise Art will do a much better job. Fairly good job. Right? <laughs> fairly good job. I get the Jim Butler fairly good job. I'm just feeling more than you have, so it's easier for me to compliment and talk about that. But, but Jim can speak to, he can fill in any blanks on how and he can also speak to the site plan in great detail. Right. right. I mean, the building has obviously some unique colors and character to it. Um, it's meant to be for children. And that's why they chose the primary colors. When we went through the interview process with the DMC, there were three firms that were selected. They said this was the most exciting design they saw out of the other two firms that came forward. That's why they were selected. Um, that bump out that Brent is talking about on this side is actually inspired by the existing building that was there, the Yamasaki building. It had a protrusion out along the side where his conference room was and where his office was, if you ever saw the building. So that was kind of an inspiration because of his style and his form. The building has, it is all black and glass is what that building has. It has colored glass. Those areas you see within the what's windows, that is colored glass. The thought is when there is sunlight coming through there, you could have somewhat of a rainbow effect coming through there. Again, the funness of the building and of the design. Um, glazed block in primary colors. Instead of using, you know, I know a lot of companies have gone and used metal panels, but the block was important because they wanted that durable material for the building. Building uh, material samples. We, yeah, we did requesting what we brought to the meeting. 
We're going to bring the sample case and the look and feel of it all. And, and that, the, the good point about the, uh, the uh, kind of the nod to Yamasaki, when, we, when this was being contemplated, we got some, a couple of phone calls, not a lot, but a few phone calls, emails, people saying, was the Yamasaki building coming down? Uh, oh my gosh, this is the worst thing. Is that it, I thought it was historic. Well, it, it, it wasn't historic. Um, but nonetheless, there, there were still a lot of important uh, art, you know, buildings that were, that were designed in that building. So um, we did indicate to, uh, to DMC that you're, you're, you're not, it's not required, but you, you may want to give some type of a nod to, to Yamasaki and to what was done there. And we were first kind of thinking about maybe a display case or, or something inside the building. And they kind of took that, ran with it, and, and, and added these features outside the building, which is kind of neat. And I'm still talking to do something as a tribute to them. What, do, what that is, don't know as of yet, but there's, some, there's something in the works. So uh, what does everyone think? Well, I agree with you on that, especially since they were the architects on the uh, Twin Tower. <laughs> exactly. So I think, uh, I think something like that would be uh, appropriate. Any other comments? I think it's a great statement. I'd love to see more architecture in the city as opposed to the bland, plain vanilla stuff that uh, so often comes along. So I think it's great. I think it's a very honest statement, being a children's facility, using the primary colors. And I think the massing, you know, I mean, you could look at a lot of medical office buildings, three-story medical office buildings, and the massing is just horrendous. It's a big blob. When I see it here with a few ins and outs and ups, it, it really breaks down the massing and the colors help break down the massing. So I, I think it's a great statement, great job. On the colored glass, I'm having a hard time visualizing what yellow and red glass or blue glass can look like and not over time streak or get distorted in the color. Yeah. Um, I don't know what the application or how that works with the glass. I'm not an expert in glass, but I'll certainly bring back the answer and come forward to the Planning Commission for, for that meeting upcoming. I'm, if I could just add, I'm not sure, but typically these are insulated glass units, so you have two layers of glass. Usually the colors are going to go on the inside layer, so they won't even be on the outside panes of the glass. Right. So they're protected. So, from, so distortion or streaking? Or well, the streaking anything. would be whatever. They're going to have to keep it clean. I mean, it's, it'll, any, any glass will streak, but um, I, I, don't think, uh, I don't think distortion will be an issue. Okay. And from the colors, you know, again, it's going to be protected because it's not ever going to see the, the weather, if you will. So I, I, I appreciate if you would run yep. that question. And Absolutely. See what they say. Right. Yeah, I, I think it's an exciting statement. I think uh, the city needs more visual, visual things that are visually exciting to walk, look at. Uh, creates a point of interest in the city. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much about the colored glass. If they use the kind of quality glass they've done for the last 500 years in churches and cathedrals, I don't think there'd be a serious problem with fading. I don't really know. I'm not a glass expert, but there's there's a lot of stained glass that's been up for more than oh, no, four or five hundred years. Oh no, you're absolutely right in the stained glass. And I don't know what that process is in stained glass versus industrial style glass. But my my thought was, as the building ages over time, you know, if anything begins to fade or deteriorate, then it doesn't become that bright spot or that focal point. It just looks tired. Sure, they'll address that. I don't know. So, in terms of the building materials, could they also bring some some glass? Yes. I think yes. yes. My, my understanding is also to your point. My understanding is also that the glass and maybe the architects know can can chime in. But depending on what what the light, how much light is in, is out like at, during the day at night, the glass changes in terms of how it looks from the street. It, it actually maybe becomes more yellow at night or yes less yellow at night or whatever. So the, the characteristics of the glass actually change over the course of the day, which is right. which is kind of interesting. Mr. Stratt. Yeah, yeah. What, what is the uh, tower? Is that uh, stair tower? You know what that tower is? That is a stair tower, yes. It may also be an elevator, because you have to have an elevator and an elevator tower. Oh, you don't know what it is, but. What's that? You know what it is? It is a stair tower. It is? Yes. How about elevators? Are they in there too? Elevator is, there's two uh, series of elevators. There's one is along the east elevation, which is essentially between the green band that goes horizontal and that orange one right oh, okay. Okay. for freight and what have you. Okay. 
Okay, so he's kind of tall, that's why I was just asking. Is well, there a cooling tower up there? Or one statement. House <laughs> presents the opportunity for signage. Yeah. 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 So yeah. You can expect their love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know where you're going. You know where you're going. You know where I was Which, going that okay. direction. Did your mom have No, I'm done. Is, Mr. Is, uh, it, is this going to be a Big Beaver address? Yes. So if it's a Big Beaver address and people are looking for that, I, I was just looking at the plan and I just wondered how that was going to be addressed. With, you know, you mentioned the traffic and I know what you're talking about. I know exactly. but. People looking for a big beaver address, it might pose a concern getting in there easily because they can't get into it off of Big Beaver. Once City Hall has that too. Yeah. City Hall is a this building's a big beaver address, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. This is this is actually a five hundred yeah. yeah. So, so I, I I'm, I'm the one I, I hear what you're saying. Um, but I would I would say that if the design is approved as is, you're probably gonna know that you're at the children's hospital just by the fact that it looks like no Lego blocks. <laughs> like <'em's. laughs> I just wondered about the signage yeah. and addresses oh, yeah. and directional information. Yep. And then also, did you say they donated? DMC just gave 10 feet of direction? Um, we are going to donate 10 feet of right away. Actually, currently, it's, there was a match out there that was when the roadway was built. That's why the retaining wall sits there, and that's why that right. sidewalk is right up against the back of the curb. We've elected to donate that additional 10 feet. We keep the building where it's at, and we also have 10 more feet, tear down the retaining wall, and put a walkway and do the things that are, are part of the Big Beaver. Donate's a little strong. We're going to pay them a dollar for it. Yeah. <laughs> if you want it to get built, you donate. <laughs> well, well it's, it's a little quid pro quo because yeah. they uh, need sure. a curb cut on our street, yeah, I, you know, just right. to the north of that. I know. So I had just we'll pay them the, the, the dollar back. Just curious. And also, as part of our application, there was a traffic study that was completed. Um, we also did a parking study just to check it to make sure what's comparable and we make sure it works because there are three particular facets within your ordinance. One is a medical office building, one is a hospital, and another one is a clinic. And we wanted to test. Obviously, it's not a hospital. It's not. It's part medical office and part um, center. So we went and looked at two different facilities, one up in Clarkston and another one down in Royal Oak. And we came up with about 3.0 something parking spaces per thousand square feet. So that's the standard we're going to use. And I thought like Ben had mentioned, Brian had mentioned, we do have access to a shared parking along our east property line um, with Marriott. Marriott. And various, vice versa, they have access to us if we need it. And there's also access to Livernois. Yeah, that road will connect all the way out to Livernois. Now that's a final connection. And like, Ben and Brennan mentioned we are eliminating that curb cut. We heard that from day one that that had to be removed, so. Now that you're uh, moving the uh, utilities, you're still going to leave the building canted, I hope. Oh, yeah. That's really Absolutely. Important. I think that's really important. Yeah, no, it's, it's like yeah. It was a very innovative solution, the way they do that. We were, it was a challenge, and Brent and Ben know we came forward a couple of times in some very informal meetings right. with some very different plans. And having two access points, an MRI and a back of house, is a very, very difficult way to design a building. Um, that MRI did not start where it is today. No. Full, full disclosure. It started up towards full the smaller building. It was right here. <laughs> and that created a whole bunch of issues that we, could, we couldn't get around. No windows. Mm -hmm. yeah, no so windows. at the end of the day, we had to move it. And we think this was a great solution. Well, I really love it. I, th I think it's a great, you, great plan. I think it'll really be exciting, and uh, look forward to seeing the rest of the details and, and uh, our next meeting with this. Yes, Mr. Comment uh, regard to Mr. Gottlieb's comment about the address. I know there, the, the address has to be. The numbers actually have to be shown on Big Beaver for mm -hmm. the fire department. Right. And they have certain height requirements for that. I'm sure in that yellow area. That entrance area that faces Big Beaver, that could be a big three five zero. <laughs> that could be easily seen by anyone. Just like we have a big five zero zero for right. the city of Troy. Right. Anyway, just thought I'd throw that in there, just just for your architect to think about if Absolutely. he hasn't already thought about it. I'm sure he has. Thought about a lot. Yes, Mr. Stratton. That tower is not going to have a big DMC on it, right? <laughs> 
so there won't be any problem in finding it. I'll tell you that, that, that uh, certainly probably will end up being there. Uh, I just have a question. Is this a corner lot? Is this going to be considered a corner lot? No. no. Is that two public rooms? No. It's, it's actually it's a public room. It's actually a, it's not a, no. this is not a right of way, believe it or not. <coughs> really? It's yeah. a city owned, a city owned sliver, a city owned parcel. All the streets are city owned, aren't they? No, no, no. This is actually a. Okay. In between the road right of way and their property line, yeah. there's a small sliver of parcel. Yeah. It's actually city owned. So it does not meet the definition of a corner lot. Oh, good. good. It actually works out for the best. The placement of this, I think, the oh, placement. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's one thing. We, as, as Jim said, we had three or four meetings with them, and that was one of the issues that came up was do we consider this a parcel, a corner yeah. parcel or not? And we, after research, we, we determined it's not a corner parcel. Well, that's good. And they're going to maintain that slivery. Uh, that's a good question. Yeah. We currently maintain it, and I don't know under what what reasoning we would have not the responsibility to keep maintaining it, but we can look into it. After 15 years, they own it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll probably maintain it. I'm just curious, then. Good question. Any other questions or comments? Does anyone in the audience have any comments? Okay. Well, thank you very much. Very thank you for your feedback. Thank you for your time. We'll get some answers for you and come back to you. Thank you. Do you want the? Yeah, I just uh, all I need is the. Um, I have to disconnect yours. Okay. I, I hope I don't. So do I. It's a, um, it's a driveway access. It's an actual, we got a roadway, you have an right. actual cut okay. to provide okay. a, a driveway or a, or a drive. Okay. Yep. And our fallback, fallback plan, Tom, is I've got the uh, report that I put on the screen. Okay. Uh, it plugged in. I don't know if that means it's going to work. We'll just let it warm up and give me a second till it yep. boots up and we'll see what happens. If it doesn't happen, I've got another fallback too. I have my own projector, but we could use that. And I, the thing is, what I did in the, the, the document, it's just one image. I've elaborated on that in my presentation. So um, if we don't see a, a happy symptom, something happy in a minute, I will, uh, I would like to get my own projector if that's okay. Uh, it would take me five minutes more, is that okay with the? Mm -hmm. We can take a five minute break. Okay, well, we're just waiting for this to boot up and if, but if I don't see something pop up on the screen the next minute, I'll. Uh, it's still, so I, can, I mean, I can restart it. It says no signal here. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just, it's, I haven't booted my, okay. my computer yet. Well, there we go. There we go. So we'll see. Oh, there you go. We got something. This is where you went in the planning commission. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't look like Atlanta, Georgia to me. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, this is my trip to Atlanta. <laughs> Who wants to see my pictures? <laughs> so, so Tom was the only representative of the city to attend the uh, national uh, APA planning conference which this year was held in April in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. So we promised you'd take, you'd take some pictures and uh, give us a brief summary. Yeah. Of and, and what I, for the most part, you'll, what you'll see at this, as soon as I turn it on, uh, as soon as I put the play button on, it plays. Um, 
with the double, what it works. Um, this is where it was held, uh, the Georgia World Congress Center. Uh, the, what you'll see in upcoming slides are going to, what I did, I photographed, these images are pictures I took of the screens during the uh, study sessions. The first one's called Complete Streets. Its focus was uh, designing a street that is what we consider complete. That means that it serves the needs of all people using that street. That means pedestrians, people on bikes, people pushing strollers, elderly, um, and then just, it, it gave some examples uh, of what they had visions of what Complete Street should look like. And in my report, I go into a little more detail on the words. I'm just gonna show more pictures today than words. Um, <clears throat> they emphasize they'd like to make complete streets the rule and not the exception. In other words, all streets should have, you know, why just certain special areas to be complete? Why do we, why not design all streets to be complete? That way, no matter where you are in, a, in our country or what place you are in our city, um, it, it accounts for everyone. Everyone can use that without any hassle. And there's some examples they gave below. Again, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. Uh, here's an example of what they call incomplete streets. And this gives you that kind of perspective of, you know, how can these people cross? There's no way for them to cross, yet they had to get across. Uh, we want to avoid these kind of dangerous situations and avoid, uh, you know, the basic uh, unattractiveness of streets like this. Um, this is a project that was in Charlotte, North Carolina, I believe it was, and uh, they just showed an example of one of the projects they completed. Um, uh, this was interesting. They, they showed these two ads, both are from a magazine. This one was from, this first one was from General Motors, and that's from a bike company. And the, uh, <coughs> the ad from General Motors was, reality sucks. Likely the GM College discount doesn't. And what they're saying is stop pedaling, start driving. Go to GM College discount. <laughs> and so the bike company came back with reality does suck. <laughs> Luckily bikes don't. <laughs> stop, stop driving, start pedaling. The idea was this guy's trying to hide his face because she's an attractive girl and he's <laughs> embarrassed that he's on a bike. <laughs> but anyway, it's the, it's the flip of their ad. I thought it was rather cute. Um, another session I attended was uh, raising the value of streets, and again the focus was a lot on pedestrians and bikes, and they put them notice and motors, but they put that that was like background, not, not that important. And what they're showing here is how so many streets are designed for vehicles. You've got three lanes plus a turning lane on each side of the road, and you've got a situation again where a pedestrian is basically left out in the woods. Uh, what they showed was how it can, this transformation can come over time. It doesn't have to all happen at once, although it can. In most cases, it's, like it's best if it does. The first, the top slide on the right shows uh, just adding maybe street pavers, some uh, tree streets, uh, trees on the street, how it can help. There's an existing garage on the right of that upper right photograph. What they showed was adding to that garage, make it, maybe developing into something a little more attractive, a little have different uses. And then the last one on the lower right shows that it, how it could attract new business to come to the area because they see vibrancy coming to this particular street. And pedestrian skill lighting. Right. Yes, mm -hmm. oh yes, thank you, adding that in too. This one I just took out right outside the convention center and I thought, you know, here's a complete way to, here's another way complete streets could work. This is a uh, uh, traffic calming a bump in the road, but this is where a pedestrian crossing it, I think it was well, rather well done. Instead of that one little bump, bump, you know, kind of thing you get, you know darn well when your vehicle starts raising in the air, you should start slowing down if you mm -hmm. haven't already figured that out, but I thought this was a great solution right at the convention center for a complete street a solution. Uh, this is one of our, we went on, I went on a variety of at least three if not four varieties of mixed use development tours. This is. Uh, the guy in the yellow shirt was one of our uh, direct uh, guides. This particular development is called West Village, and it, what they basically did was, in this situation, they leveled the existing buildings entirely uh, that were there, put in new roads and new buildings, so it was basically from dirt up, brand new. This is a 10-year-old development, and they had uh, retail on the first floor, housing above, 
and this is just to give you a street view. Most of all of these that I've noticed in Atlanta are two lane roads with uh, street parking. So you've got, in this case, they've got a boulevard of a divider in that two lane road, but they had, uh, which I thought was really nice too, they had uh, really nice clean signage. Um, they didn't, you know, like Scott Trade, you can see a little bit of that. It's not their typical type of sign. You see, like, we, we have one of Big Beaver, yes. How do they park the uh, residential? We'll get into that. Oh, I'm sorry. Good, good idea. Yes. Sorry. Well, where would they put all these people? Where do they put their cars? Um, there it is. They have parking structures behind the buildings. So it's out of, kind of out of sight, out of mind kind of attitude. And they had, which I thought was nice, they had um, uh, concealed speakers that were playing really nice soft music all the time in the background. Not loud, but just, you know, you didn't notice it until you thought, you know, I hear something, oh yeah, it's something nice. You know, it's just, it was really subtle, but very pleasant. This is another development. This is, um, I believe it was Dunwoody. And this, again, this was a complete level. They just leveled the, the ground. Uh, they put in a new high rise for residents. But retail, they didn't have the retail, the, the housing necessarily above the retail in this case, but they had, it was a mix between housing and a tower, housing in this area behind, those are three-story townhouse type buildings, and uh, just put in uh, stores. And this is a couple more views of that particular development. This I thought was kind of bland, but that's what they did. Next one I went to is um, called Atlantic Station. This was an interesting one. This is one that kind of drove me to want to go on this trip. Um, what you see here is just a layout like in a mall. And what, what it really amounted to is it used to be a steel factory that was abandoned for over 40 years. And what, what the developed, it was a, an architect, architectural student at Georgia Tech came up with the idea for a senior project. Maybe it was his master's project, I can't remember. And he said, we'll take this existing site within the center, it's really almost in the center of Atlanta. And it was been abandoned for, like I can say, at least 40 years. But mainly nobody wanted to develop on it because the ground was full of pollutants. And so they had a big reclamation. They dug out a lot of dirt. And because they dug out so much dirt, what they thought what would they do, and they, what they actually did, was create a parking structure underneath the entire development. So what you're looking at, is really, you're on top of a parking structure. Everything is on top of a parking structure. Even, even the high buildings, like 20, 30, 40 foot store, story office buildings, that they are, their foundation goes right to, right, below, right into the parking structure. I thought it was really neat. The other thing is, see this number, these numbers, number seven, number six, this, this, this roof line here, that shelters a stairway to go down to the parking structure. So you find your way around, your wayfinding is by numbers. This is number 12. You remember where you came out of the parking structure? You're on this street, there's number 14. So you know where you park, sort of, close enough. Color-coded too. All color-coded. You can see there's, there are tremendously tall buildings. These are not just little teeny one-story buildings. A lot of weight all on top of the parking structure. Really well done. Street traffic. This is, a, this is Smyrna, Georgia. Uh, they, in 1988, National Geographic ran a story and was kind of derogatory to the city as they called it a redneck, you know, <laughs> wasteland, basically. They thought. And what the city, there's two couple things that were, had happened at the same time. One thing was that the citizens really didn't want to be called redneck society. They didn't really want to be called, you know, like yahoos and, you know, people in the way back woods. So they get them a little tick to do something. And then on top of that, as Atlanta grew out in the 80s and 90s, their cheap land, which was basically cinder block buildings and really tough looking, rough, rough looking buildings, nothing, nothing, ar ar nothing of architectural significance at all. Um, that land became very valuable for the land, not for the buildings. So uh, I don't know how many developers were involved in this, uh, but what they did, they leveled the entire city, just leveled it, it was the core of the city. Uh, for the most part. And they built <laughs> right in the back, that little behind there, that is the town, that is the city hall. And they created this mark this marketplace. We'll get into that a little bit. They were happened to be having a little festival at the time I was there. That in the background is their library and community center. And of course they had a lot of amenities and fountains and nice things. 
that's a little closer to look at the community center area. This is another one, the Ivy Walk. Again, same kind of principle. Developer came in, leveled the ground, leveled everything to dirt, rebuilt, um, and again, the typical retail on the first floor, uh, homes above. This one is just part, just a little part of a major development. I can't remember how many acres, but it was in the maybe 50, 60 acres worth. This is a, an elementary school. What you're seeing is only a third of that school. It's 850 student elementary school. It's I thought, rather large for an elementary school. But the exit, what was there originally was a mall that was built in 1957. And this one developer that owned all the land, all those acreage, and that mall, leveled his mall, and is in the process of creating another one of those little mini cities within a city. This one um, is it's, it's titled Turning Grayfield into Downtown. That's because of the name of the session. But again, it's that same kind of mixed use development. This one's not yet started. Um, it's, and I'll, I'll shoot, as I go through it, you'll see. These are, they put a side by side. That's the existing, what the existing view looks like, and the one on the left is what they envision it looking like. Uh, cut some of the common themes. Uh, they want to make it walkable, mixed use. Emphasis on green space, transit ready. They didn't have a transit thing. And I'll get into transit in a minute uh, later. Uh, and appeal to new generations of residents and workforce. I think that we're all aware of that. Uh, I think I included a note in my uh, my written uh, thing about exactly about that. Uh, let's go on here. Uh, this particular area is in the northern part of Atlanta, where that red uh, oval is. Uh, get this is incorporated in 2005. A lot of this is brand new. So the oldest development I saw here was 10 years old. They are Atlanta is on this bend of de demolish it to dirt and build all brand new. And the vast majority is all uh, private investment. There's very little government investment in any of this. And uh, these are showing, I guess, some of the existing conditions in that, in, uh, that uh, area. And some of their ideas for new housing and for some commercial areas. And what you see, very, very dark in the lower right-hand corner. That, that curving street, it kind of curves to the right in the distance. That's exactly this view of what they envisioned. That, that today look to their concept didn't all fit in the frame there. But, and there again, here's another example of that where they have a existing today view in the far left there, and that kind of dingy looking image to what they are proposing to do. Next one was uh, trails. I know we're, uh, it's a, Troy's got a, uh, a large citizen population that really wants trails. It's always, it's been either 80, at least 80% of the number one choices for what we should do as a Parks and Rec uh, department. So I thought I'd focus on trails since it's kind of key. Uh, I used to be on the Troy Trails Committee in, uh, back in 2008 when it existed. We had a budget uh, problem. Uh, at, the, at, that, at the original point, Troy had it in 2008, we were allotted $2 million per year for five years. And of course that disappeared with the cutbacks. But it's getting some more traction now, I noticed at council, so I thought I, I wanted to at least visit one of their trails. This particular trail system goes from uh, basically Smyrna, uh, Georgia, which is just, these towns are all like, metropolitan Atlanta is like 8.5 million people. And that's how they tend to call themselves. Even though you're in Smyrna, you're in Atlanta, but you're in Smyrna, okay, fine. It's, it's, it's just a lot of little towns that make up Atlanta. But it, there is a city proper too, of Atlanta itself. But this, this particular trail goes through three counties, seven cities, and big 24 stakeholder groups. I went to, I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail, but the thing is it's 61 miles long, goes all the way to the uh, Georgia-Alabama state line. And it, it incorporates a lot of nice features. Uh, this is the website. I just threw that in there in case we ever want to go back and look at their uh, website and details. But um, you guys, you see there's a lot of towns along the way, and those towns are rest stops. They have, uh, a lot of the merchants have built closer to that trail now because they get traffic off the trail. And they have actual uh, rest, uh, restroom stations also along the trail, which makes it very functional. And this just shows some images of it. I noticed it's just a two-lane blacktop. I mean, it's it's not it's not that 
big a deal, but it's there and people use it. By the millions, over a million people use it every year. This one, uh, this is a uh, turning a uh, an existing mall uh, into a new configuration. And this one reminded me a lot of Oakland Mall in Troy. If you look in the this picture here where they say Valley View Mall, this is a, a this is a Sears. I'm not sure what one's a, mm -hmm. one's a Penny's and one's a Macy's. It's identical as far as layout to Oakland Mall. And this is a new mall that came in later. Uh, what has happened though that the old the new mall is so exciting that merchants have flocked out of that. So it's pretty much vacant except for Sears. Sears is still doing well there. So uh, what the plan is, is something similar to what's going to happen here. They're going to put in a central park. This is the existing avid, uh, uh, sorry, the existing mall that's very active. And Sears is way in the upper right of that image. <clears throat> and here's the existing, the pre-existing outdated zoning for that, that whole area, that big chunk of property. Um, they're going to a form-based zoning, and again, these are just images of what they think will be there. This is nothing built yet. This is in Dallas, Texas. Here's a shot of the existing mall, not too dissimilar to what Oakland Mall looks like. And I'll just get through these pictures. They, they put a lot on transit uh, for both uh, bike, walking, and um, uh, they have a, like a trolley bus, the orange was like a trolley bus. And then there's um, the pink is the actual uh, light rail. Now, the exciting one you would think is science. You know, a lot of visuals, right? This was presented by a lawyer. No offense. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> but there was only, oh, you're a lawyer too? <laughs> okay. And I'm on this side of the room too. Okay. Within, within striking distance of two women. The, uh, the point here is the guy was, he was very good but he had almost no images. And the images they had were not worth putting up right today, but his points were really good. And I, I didn't give all of his points, because you know all these sessions last an hour, an hour and a half, so I'm not, you know, I'm just trying to make it quick here. Um, he reviewed the, the following things. New sign technologies, which a lot of was LED, uh, regulatory issues uh, raised by those specific technologies that we, a lot of ordinances aren't presently written, um, and looking at best practices of, of the new technologies from around different cities, what they've done. Uh, these are the, some key issues that he brought up. I won't read through it all. Um, and some old rationales, you know, courts have long, rec long recognized that billboards can be distracting. Um, and then he got at the LEDs, how they can be distracting. And then he reviewed some actual court cases, um, which was this particular one at the very <laughs> bottom. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not going to again read it all, but in a nutshell, um, basically signs that change color, messages, signs similar to those are inconsistent with aesthetic values, and that's really where I wanted to. You know, I talked about in our, um, on that Smyrna, especially they have a uh, a special commission to regulate uh, all the aesthetics for the, for the whole city of Smyrna, all new development. Which I thought was just outstanding. That's also done in other cities, not just Smyrna. I mean, I know that's Orlando. Their downtown development authority has that authority also. To regulate materials and look. Now that was the that this is at the airport. <laughs> uh, that that kind of concludes my Atlanta adventure as far as the sections. But I, when I was going through the airport, there was a really nice uh, Zimbabwe uh, exhibit down a long corridor to get from one terminal to another. And what they did, and I'll just let it speak for itself, they had artists from Zimbabwe, uh, their sculpture, and this went on for at least a quarter mile. There was well over 30 sculptures on a rock. And these were all made out of stone. Plus they had on the side walls images of their, their country. Mm -hmm. Plus the music in there was definitely African. We just felt wonderful walking through. And I'm just gonna quickly go through some of the sculpture. And it's my focus to bring more street art to the city if I can. Um, That's really cool. But some, I thought they were absolutely amazing pieces. And on the bottom of the sculptures, whoops, I'll go back one. They had a little bit of story. I didn't. I cut it out on that slide, but told about the artist, where he's from, what's he, what, you know, uh, what what kind of materials he used in cutting, etc. Well, uh, this happened to be the lobby between the hotel and the uh, Georgia uh, Conference Center. 
And I just thought, you know, it's just nice that people put up just inspirational comments in stone. We don't see, you know, just things to inspire people in our city where they would just walk down the street, just something that lets them think for a second, a little bit above the normal chitter chatter uh, that everybody kind of talks about the weather and things. And then here's some more street art, just driving through uh, Atlanta, I just was taking some shots of, this is not art, but it's just a neat way to have a bench, just a place to sit and, you know, walking down the street. Just creative ideas for things as opposed to just common stuff. That happens to be in Smyrna, by the way. And this is the, uh, what appealed to me here was, yes, they had the textured um, transition area for uh, blind, but they used the pavers. They didn't just have that concrete mm -hmm. thing with a stamp on it. It just, I thought it was just a neat way to handle that, situ that uh, you know, the ADA requirement. And also, the, you know, I thought, instead of, we have a lot of our areas in grass where you gotta mow it all the time. And I thought, you know, why can't we have a more woodsy look uh, in many situations? And then, you know, those azaleas were dynamite. They just happened to catch them that day, but they weren't there, they wouldn't be there all year round. But I just thought it was a really nice feeling. We do have a tender, uh, timber, uh, Timberland, no, Timberwoods. They, that development um, off of uh, Northfield Park, Leo, right? Is that Timber? Uh, boy, names escape me. Timber. Me too. Timber what? Wick. What the No, I said commercial development. You know, oh. the, all the offices back there. Timberland. John Timberland. 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 Thank you. Land is the, yeah. But anyway, that feeling of, you know, bringing that, that outdoorsy look, mm -hmm. I just thought was just charming. I just enjoyed seeing that. Um, did I go to <coughs> I thought this was a nice, a, a nice way to handle crosswalks. Um, they put a watch for cars. <laughs> just thought, you know, people are looking down with their with their iPods or whatever, and they're oh yeah, I gotta watch out for a car too. I just thought it would be a nice little thing with you know, knowing that again, fitting the next generation, looking toward what's next. And of course, this was part of the um, uh, Olympic uh, uh, Park, which was, they had the Olympics in 1996 in Atlanta. And again, using having you know, public art, that was really nice. And this one, um, this is, again, in the, in the Olympic Park, but you know, this is the middle of the night, so I, I took this out, I guess, nine o'clock at night or, or later, because it was pretty light up later. And there's kids and families enjoying the outdoors at, in the evenings, which I thought would be another element if we created some interest in our central part of Big Beaver to create a reason for parents to bring their kids out in the evening on a hot night. Anyway, that's my presentation. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. I like the photos at the end because like just your little snippets was yeah. really nice. Cool. Mm -hmm. You know what happens in Atlanta stays in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> now who wants to move to Atlanta? <laughs> Whoops. Well, Tom, thank you for that uh, report. That was really, I think you've set a new bar where you might go into national conferences. <laughs> yeah. Any other comments on this uh, on this report? Would we be able to get his report? Mm -hmm. Send it to us? Mm -hmm. That'd be great. Uh, now we're ready for uh, Agenda item number 10, public comment for items on the current agenda. Is there anyone in the audience who wants to speak on that? If not, we'll uh, go to number 11, the Planning Commission comment. And why don't we start with uh, you, Mr. Gottlieb. Do you have any comments this evening? Well, the only comment is that was an awesome presentation. Thank, Thank you. you. That Thanks, was really nice. I enjoyed it. There were a lot of good points out. Thank you. Mr. Tegel. Yeah, I would second that, and I also am excited to uh, see the project we saw tonight come uh, come out of the ground. It would be nice. So, Just, so. if I may? Yes. This is the point, point of the agenda where you can comment on whatever Sorry. you want to comment on. Sorry, just so you... This you, is the free-for-all? This is the free-for-all, so just when it's your turn, you can say whatever you want to say. And we don't cut you off. <laughs> oh, well, good. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Strat. I echo the comments that were previously made, and welcome, Karen. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, I don't really have any comments other than I'm just really, I'm kind of excited to be here. And um, I'm very pleased to see, you know, coming from just being a regular citizen now to someone who's had a glimpse into what my city is doing, I'm very pleased to see how truly forward-thinking um, and inclusive Troy is. So I'm very proud to be here tonight. Thank you. 
we're ha happy to have you. Thank you. This life, yes, Just to welcome Karen and uh, to tell you you're going to find it very exciting. There's a lot of good minds around this table. Right. Good. Mr. Sabat. I sent an email earlier this evening uh, regarding a piece of art. Mm -hmm. Piece of art in front of the Galleria. Yes, I it's, saw it. It's that. coming along, so it's it's baby steps, right? It's the first. Uh, I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, it does. And um, I think we we can continue to encourage uh, developers to, to do things like that. Do you know if it's a local artist or? Do you, do you know I can find out if you like. Yeah, that's what that would be interesting. I can find out. If you haven't had a chance to go to speaking of art to the PUD, the Planning and Development of Kilmer PUD, and see the. The tree and the and the, the, the water feature they have in there. There's some metallic trees that are behind it. Oh. Pretty pretty cool. Okay. Yeah, if you have a chance, um, welcome aboard. We're happy to have you. And I think that's it. Mr. Carlo, I want to thank Mr. Krent. That was a that was a really nice presentation. A lot of, a lot of good ideas and good report. And welcome, uh, Ms. Cruz. It's nice to nice to have you on board. Thank you. Roger. Uh, same comments as. Okay. Thank you. Well, wow, I want to welcome Karen uh, for one, and for two, I, forgot, I didn't mention, but the the cost to go of the 11 and a half miles from the Atlanta airport to my hotel was three dollars, and that's and that was on their yes their um, MARTA system. Okay. It's, uh, it's electric trains, okay. and it's three bucks. You get on anywhere and get you know it'll take you to the whole length. I, think, I can't remember how many miles, at least 25 or 30 miles. And just it's three bucks, no matter what. Where you go, I thought it was just tremendous. I'd love to have that around here. Yeah. There was something similar to that in um, Minneapolis too. There, they have a seven-county regional transit authority, and the ride from the airport is on light rail is just just amazing. They you know, they even have uh, places for uh, people to bring their bikes on uh, right in the train. You know, so it was great and then the dirt cheap it was like i think it cost me 75 cents because i was a senior <laughs> <laughs> whatever <clears throat> well again karen thank you so much you. Uh, for uh, agreeing to uh, participate and you'll find that there are a myriad of opportunities to uh, seek training and everything like that i hope you take advantage of that oh i intend to okay thank you if there are no further comments anyone else then we are adjourned thank you